Hi and welcome, Jeremy Cato, CatoCarGuy.com. Glad you can join me. Now, to the question, and the question is, should you buy the Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle Hybrid Minivan? I'm not kidding. Should you buy a minivan? There's no getting around the, the fact is that SUVs and crossover wagons of all kinds, and even pickup trucks, trucks of all kinds, they are red hot. That's what people are buying. Of course, sales of minivans and pfft, have been going down the train for decades. I still think there's a case to be made, at least for the family buyer, that a minivan makes the most sense of all. And then there's the second trend going on in the marketplace, and that's electrification. And the Pinnacle Hybrid, the Pacifica Pinnacle Hybrid, has a plug, and it has a range of about 50 kilometers. For the record, there are four Pacifica models to choose from. Touring, Touring L, Limited, and this Pinnacle here. Now the Pacifica has been updated for 2021, and the plug-in version is at the very top of the range. So you're talking 50,000 plus. I realize that I'm begging the question even further by even bringing up the idea of a luxurious minivan, a luxurious minivan with a plug. Worth a look? Minivans of all kinds and shapes and sizes and prices, yes, they are completely out of fashion, but gosh, this, this Pacifica Pinnacle has soft leather upholstery, back supporting lumbar pillows, plugs, and a very sophisticated hybrid powertrain, not to mention wireless Apple CarPlay, a superb touchscreen, and USB Type-C fast charging port. So all the tech pieces are here, and it's fancy. And I'll be honest, most of my friends laugh at the word minivan. I mean, some of them say, well, look, a minivan is a zoot suit or a mini bowler hat from the 1940s or a jumpsuit from the 1970s or leg warmers and Madonna from the 1980s and trucker hats from the 2000s. Everything I've just listed out of style, just like the minivan. But, but there's a case to be made for minivans and I'm gonna keep pushing this because I really like the offering here and for the money, you get much more in a minivan, especially the Pacifica Pinnacle, than you'll ever get in a similarly luxurious cross, uh, crossover SUV or pure SUV. The case for any minivan starts with the sliding side doors. Very easy to open and there's no dings in the parking lot. You can squeeze in even in a crowded Costco parking lot. Better still, the Pacifica Pinnacle has ideal ride height for entry and exit. There's no climbing up into a truck and no crawling down into a car. So can we overcome the little milk truck vibe that uh, is now associated with minivans? And the engineering in the modern minivan, especially this Chrysler Pacifica, is terrific. What I mean by that is, look, you can drive this comfortably. The minivan here is stable at highway speeds. It corners well, like an actual car, not a tippy truck. On the subject of seating, I have to go right to the second row captain's chairs. Fantastically comfortable with great lumbar support. Throughout the cabin, there's just tons and tons of places to store everything you can imagine. Nothing on the market beats a minivan for usable, storage spaces. I'd also point to the Pacifica Pinnacle's Uconnect infotainment system. Uh, the interface here is absolutely the best in the auto industry short of Tesla's gigantic and really well-conceived touchscreen. Minivans have this lowbrow image. <laughs> they don't have the Tesla image, that's for sure. Tesla, the most valuable car company in the world, worth as much as the next six most valuable car companies put together. And, and anyway, look, the minivan image is suburbia, old fashioned stuff, but what you're looking at here today in the Pacifica Pinnacle Hybrid is nothing at all like the minivans of the past. Well, the Pacifica Pinnacle is not this by a long shot. We're looking at the K car based first generation minivan that was a last gasp of desperation 
from the then nearly bankrupt Chrysler Corporation way back in the mid-1980s. Pretty bare-bones stuff, right? Hard plastics, no headrests. Generation 2 was a huge improvement. But the heyday for minivans, Chrysler minivans in particular, came with Generation 3 in 1996. Better materials, functional headrests, streamlined looks. Then Gen 4 brought stow and go seating, followed in 2008 by a real push for safety, blind spot monitoring and such. And in 2017, the Chrysler brand launched a new version of the Pacifica and with it a smooth design, a plug-in hybrid version, and more than decent touchscreens. The minivan with the largest touchscreen in the business comes loaded with an excellent range of connected features. For example, you can sync it with Amazon's Alexa, and that means you can get your car to do the same things that Amazon Alexa does at home. Uh, play podcasts, find audiobooks, play music, Plus, you can have it unlock your doors and do all sorts of other things. Other things like check news, weather, traffic, sports, and other real-time information. Plus, the Android operating system is very, very fast, and you can program up to six user profiles. Wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are available, which means you can get rid of all the cords that clutter up the cabin. If you have kids, there's a camera that shows you what they're doing in the rear seats. For charging your devices, there are USB Type-C ports. And they charge up to four times faster than standard USB ports. In all, this family hauler has up to 12 USB Type-A and Type-C ports. I'm thinking you might also be asking, is there an all-wheel drive version of the Pacifica Pinnacle? not just the front-wheel drive version like we're testing. And the answer to that is, yes, there is an all-wheel drive version, but it's not available as a plug-in hybrid. Not yet. On the safety front, this hybrid minivan comes with a long roster of safety gear. Tons of stuff to protect you and your family. And God forbid if you do get into a crash, well, this rig has a good crash test rating by the Insurance Institute, so you're protected, even in the worst situation. The design here, <laughs> this is about as good as it's ever been with the minivan. Up front, you have this shiny Chrysler badge. Uh, you've got a very uh, interesting chrome grille, the LED headlamps and fog lamps. And at the rear, there's an LED light bar that runs the entire width at the rear, and it's integrated with the rear backup camera. Inside, the center console is well integrated into the instrument cluster, the binnacle where you'll find all your gauges. The front armrests are also well integrated into the big console, which has dual-level storage. Underneath the console is a pass-through with storage for bags or a laptop. Tons and tons of storage here. There is also a wireless charging system. The only upholstery is a caramel colored leather, quite soft. The second row captain's chairs are luxurious. These movable lumbar comfort pillows for the second row captain's chairs help a lot on long drives. A couple of functional pieces I really like, uh, the TomTom Tom navigation system with over the air updates. Very cool, very useful, and there is also a pretty cool uh, charging station navigation locator so you can track where to get your next charge. Uconnect, in fact, supports up to three customer-defined charging schedules. What does that mean? Well, you can set the charging dates and times for three different users. This rig also comes with over-the-air updates, which is terrific, and a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. In back, there is a rear seat entertainment system with two 10.1 inch seat back touchscreens. The Harman Kardon audio system has a big subwoofer and 20 speakers. The sound is great, especially so because the cabin is sealed for quiet even at highway speeds. What separates this rig from the competition more than anything else is the hybrid powertrain and it includes 
a 3.6 liter V6 gas engine, and two electric motors with a battery pack. One of the electric motors delivers an estimated 84 kilowatts while the other generates 63. Chrysler pegs total output at about 260 horsepower. Now, once you've depleted the charge of the 16 kilowatt hour battery pack, which oh, in all electric mode gives you about 50 kilometers of range, well, you can charge the whole thing up overnight in a, using a 120 volt outlet or in a couple of hours using a 240 volt outlet. The transition between all electric and gasoline is completely seamless. You hardly know it's happening. And even with the battery fully depleted, the electric motors propel the Pacifica off the line at low speed. So you get some real jump off the line. Overall, there's a lot to like here. And even the quality history is good. I did a search of safety recalls and only found a few minor things, nothing of great consequence. Now, Consumer Reports ranks the uh, Pacifica uh, number two amongst its minivans, second only to the Toyota Sienna. And in J.D. Power's vehicle dependability study, the three-year study, while well, the Pacifica was ranked in the top three amongst all the minivans. I was a little troubled to see how much value the Pacifica loses over time. According to Canadian Black Book, by 2024, you're going to lose about half of the value of a $60,000 minivan, and by 2024, it'll be worth about 31,000 bucks. You will find lots of discounts out there, though, and they should slice the price by at least $7,000. If I've convinced you that a luxury minivan is worth a look, you have a surprising number of choices in the 50,000 plus range. Toyota has the Sienna, Honda, the Odyssey. Kia is just now launching a new rig called the Carnival. And you can also look at Chrysler's own Grand Caravan. Yes, it's dated, but it sells for as little as the mid to high 20s. Of them all, the Pacifica Pinnacle Hybrid, well, it's my top pick, uh, and by quite a margin. Look, yes, you should buy it if you're looking for a luxurious alternative, one that's technologically equipped and very pleasant to drive to, some of these very, very high-priced SUVs and crossovers. The Chrysler Pinnacle Cato Car Guide. Hi, in Jeremy Cato. Cato Car Guide got out here in the wilderness, and I'm ready to answer a question. I'm so glad you could join me. To the question, and the question is, why is that chainsaw out there grinding away in the background? Yes, sales of <laughs> going down the toilet for a, oh, for crazy. That doesn't mean 